<laughs> that's this. basically that's what this site is. We were able, basically able to hold off a bunch of Indians and the British, but we didn't do anything else, and then eventually we abandoned it. So American exceptionalism. So if I'm right, I believe this is about, I think the only American revolutionary fort that's actually furthest west of, of you know, I think during its time. A lot of different things. It's, it's not as exciting as I would say some other ones. I actually really enjoy some of these revolutionary war forts. I've only been to a couple. I've been to ones in Connecticut and stuff, and it's really interesting. But this one, being as far west as it is, you get not just British, you get a lot of Native American issues and everything else. Um, to hold off a bunch of Indians and the British, but we didn't do anything else, and then eventually we abandoned it. So American exceptionalism all the way right there. Native Americans, fuck yeah. that, mixed up. <laughs> that's right. Sorry, I should I should have been more politically correct. That's not very Canadian of me. Yeah, what the hell's wrong with you? Right. But Daddy Trudeau is gonna gonna call you into his office. Call me back for re-education. <laughs> Interesting thing is, you get tomb of like the unknown, their own tomb of the unknown soldier. So anybody that lost their life here in during the American Revolution, they have it to commemorate their lives. Which we get our, Wait, which, our sixth grade trip to Washington D.C. They have that too in the National um, Cemetery. Time to go in. Gotta wear the face mask. Murph, you ready? Yes. Okay. A circular thing. So the main thing for this fort is mainly just positioning. They just wanted land. The British wanted the land so they can flush the Americans out. Americans, Americans just wanted the land for after the war. It's kind of what they needed. So in order for that to happen, they had to basically they they not only had to, Americans not only had to fought off the Indians or Native Americans, but the British. They had to secure their their supply lines, and at that time it was hard, hard. <laughs> oh yeah. Americans were like, we want the land. And that was pretty much it. Like they were like, no, yeah. yeah. What, was, really what I'm fighting was for. Ameri it was Americans, it was British too, because they wanted the land for after the war too. See this dude. It's just spooky. It's so cool because you guys can't see these banners, but basically, like they're they're kind of talking about like different correspondences, correspondences about what's going on, the materials that they need. Because this fort was just so understaffed, undermanned. There's no, like they literally had to physically go out and, and find uh, wood and food and. You know, like I said before, with Native Americans, so you either get in little skirmishes or you run the risk of running into some British and have a full on fight. So it was rough. As Murph can tell right now. He's oh. <laughs> so the crazy thing about muskets, you guys, you know, with Americans and their guns and stuff, yeah. I was always fascinated with these, just like how long it takes to reload. You guys can see. <laughs> Basic operation, put a little bit of powder in. <laughs> Into the flintlock, into the barrel. You gotta push it down, and then. A lot of times, it's still misfire. Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't guaranteed. And you probably, even if your aim would be completely off, be terrible. They say because of the sparks, you'd have to aim with your other eye. So a lot of people think you could just aim down the barrel. No. Because of the sparks, you'd have to close this eye and aim with that one. Jeez, Murph, did you read a book? Yep. Oh. I study. I study here and there when I can. <laughs> this Murph channel. Oh my. <laughs> I what it got all the, when it comes to weaponry, I, I've always been fascinated. <laughs> and seeing someone charging at you with this, like that would be nuts. Like, at least nowadays you can That like, son of a gun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Seriously, like someone charging at you with a knife, like it's crazy. I've, I've read I've read stories and stuff where people have said that they'd rather be shot than stabbed. Like that would just be a nightmare just to 
that's a skull, and that's a tomahawk in his skull. <laughs> oh, and they said that probably happened when, so I'm sure, as the German people know, when they study our history, the Americans used to scalp them, so literally you'd be dead or dying, and then they grab by the hair like that, and they take a knife and just take your take top of your scalp. And it was considered, it's considered to, to them to be like, that's what they would do, their warrior culture. <laughs> Could you imagine them just fucking hatch it right into your... Yeah, that's right there. That is yeah. a hatchet mark. That Damn. is pierced the skull. So like Murf said, they waited a very long time. They, just, they didn't even find this place until what, World War I? Yeah, 1917. 1917, they didn't even find this place. They didn't even excavate it until what? Around, around uh, 50 years later, they, they, they kind of started doing stuff. 60s? 60s, I mean, 1917, they would, have, they would have probably, yeah, they didn't start, start until the 60s. 60s. Jesus. Yeah, right here. 1984, sorry. They, 1984. Unearthed, a, they unearthed a burial, so that stunned the ex excavation. But yeah, in the 1960s, they realized they had the wrong area. That was further south. It's so hard to kind of like grasp, like the, not just the size, but the scale, but what the fort looked like. And this is probably one of the best, uh, there's actually like digital representations of it, but they actually have a scale here. of like where this place is located and this Fort Lorenz, the McIntosh Fort Pitt. This kind of helped protect. So most of the fighting was kind of going on over here. And so I know for a fact the British tried to come down through top of New York and try to come down. They kind of met a lot of different defense. So they decided let's go down through Sandusky and work our way down. So they end up becoming friends with a lot of Native Americans, using them to try to attack Fort Lorenz, and then hopefully pushing everything towards the coast so we can flush them out. Simple. But this place only has like one major stand, and they stopped it, which stopped the influx of British coming through, and until the French could arrive. Yeah. There were small things like mercenary. There we go. Actually. My family's part Prussian, so yeah. um, they actually helped train a lot of our troops. Um, there's actually, well, uh, I'll actually show you guys, I think you guys will see the next video, but there's actually a small little village of uh, Germans that left Germany to come here. It was like a major settlement point, major settlement area. A lot of them, Ohio Germans. Germans really Scouts. enjoyed Ohio. Was, you know, <laughs> we had to build in at one point, and unfortunately, because of one of the world wars, that got yeah, disappeared. You guys saw my last video, with, or one of my videos with Germany and Ohio um, comparisons. I'll make sure I put that up in the yard card, but yeah, it's um, one of the major first settlement points was actually in this area, and I should go there today. So, you guys kind of saw, it's almost like a, uh, like a semi-circle of just artifacts and stuff. Like I said, the, the, it's such a short history here, and it's actually pretty dope, uh, not gonna lie. Uh, I'm low-key, kind of like a Revolutionary War buff. It's kind of something I've been really into the last few years. Uh, there's, like I said, there's... This fort really had like one part to play, but it actually had one of the biggest parts, if you kind of look at it the right way. Just because it's like they almost stopped the advance of the British from, you know, from the north to the east. And it's huge. So, that's why Murph is loving this history lesson. Oh yeah. He's having a grand old time. Unfortunately, in school, I always found this history boring, but for some reason, I am actually enjoying it. In school, they just taught us so many names, and I'm like, I'm going to Oh, yeah, they just yell things at and you. It's like, like, this is what yeah. happened. You're like, okay. They're like, General McIntosh, and then there's General Washington, and you're like, how, how many generals are there? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm confused. Yeah. Like, like I said, I've, I've been to a few. There's, And this is kind of the part that's interesting. A lot of Revolutionary War Force were actually reused by... by uh, the War of 1812 a little bit, and also they were reused right around the Civil War. So, at least some of the major ones. So like I said, this one shut down about just before 1800, so it wasn't re really reused again. Um, but the location was perfect, uh, right on uh, one of the major rivers here. Kind of overlooked it, but as you guys can see, this is where the highway is. 
uh, so they had to cut it in half. It's really interesting stuff. You just don't really get a sense for that stuff. But like I said, Revolutionary War history here, of all things, we should be kind of preserving. It's kind of been dying a little bit. Yeah, um, as you see by this. Yeah. Oh. Hospital. Oh. Okay. Oh. That's good. There you go. Molt. Yeah, it was basically just selling Murph. It's crazy because like you guys already saw the beginning corner uh, front of the museum and then the corner that we were just at. Uh, that was actually like the shortest end of the whole fort. So it's kind of crazy just to even think about just how big this whole thing like Murph said everything the rest of the fort goes further south and it's just massive and that even if you go further south off of the ledge here onto the highway that's probably only half of it so you even know how big this thing is not bad Murph America <laughs> <laughs> like I said guys, there's not, it's the only one, I think it's probably the furthest west uh, fort in the United States, let alone uh, the one thing I, I've seen is obviously the only one in Ohio completely, but like I said, there's not too many of these around. They are amazing to see. Uh, the further northeast you go, uh, I, actually the more scenic it gets, because they have to sit up on the hill, but they're always amazing to look at. Uh, as always guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As Murph did, obviously, you can tell with his face. There you go. Oh, it's uh, fun, man. It's, it's, an, it's unfortunately a sad reality of our dying history that people don't really want to um, remember anymore, which we'll end on that sad note. Thank That's you, Murph. <laughs> way, to, way to end it. Hey, man. Support local history.